Dr. Diku, thank you for joining us. You were a lot of things during the Second Republic. Could you compare that Republic and now? Well, people keep asking me this question, compare this and that, compare this and that. You see, um, I think they have one thing in common, in that they are both democratic republics, mm -hmm. distinct from military republics. Yes. And um, uh, in some cases, the styles are similar. Uh, there are many things which the present uh, administration does and which one can say are fairly similar to what we did in those days of the Second Republic. But they differ in the sense that uh, if you look deeply, they don't have the depth of our logic and the reasons. Example, sir. You know, there is, I've always um, said to my friends that those who know how would always find a job, right? Those who know how would always find a job. But those who know why, they would always be the leaders. Uh, the Second Republic, in my view, in the history of governments or governance in Nigeria, it was unique. Unique in the sense that we carried the people along with us and people were very happy, I, I, I dare say so. People were very happy in Nigeria. And our politics were not politics of Naira. It was politics of principle and politics of service and politics of brotherhood. That was the politics we had. And we ruled this country with those things. And I think we were liked. Short of military, and even military, they had to do it at night. They couldn't do it during the day. They had to do it at night. So they came and pushed that republic, that Southern Republic, what I call the real republic. And I can say it without any fear of contradiction, that today, if you are to conduct uh, a survey, opinion poll in Nigeria, and say to people, would you like uh, the Shagali Republic? My goodness, they would, they would dance. They would dance. Because you are talking of comparing. You see, in the Second Republic, one Naira was equivalent to $1.65. In other words, one Naira would buy you more than one and a half dollars. Today, you have to look for 143 Naira before you can get one American dollar. Look at it. Now, in the days of the Second Republic, one Naira, 10 Kobo, would buy you the British pound sterling. Today, you have to look for 261 Naira before uh, you will get one British pound sterling. So look at that. In other words, you see the difference in the economy. Right? In those days of the Second Republic, people used to go over of a weekend in London because a round trip, Lagos, London, London, Lagos was 570 naira, 570 naira for a return trip by, 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 by aeroplane. So people used to leave Lagos on Friday evening and spend the weekend in London comfortably and come back. Today, if you are going to London with the lowest of class, you have to pay something like 170,000 Naira. So you see, these are simple comparisons. Now come to food. In the days of the Second Republic, if you go with your 30 Naira, you will buy American long grain, parboiled rice, from any market whether you are buying in Medugri or you are buying in uh, Calabar, the same price, right? So that is full wise. So everybody was reasonably happy and we created such brotherliness amongst the politicians that if you are in MPN, for instance, and that goes for every other party in the country, if you are in MPN, 
and you are you 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 say you go to uh, you go to Uma here. As soon as you find another MPM man, you are at home. So you see, the achievement was fantastic. Not only that, we dealt with the problem of uh, tribalism because people were beginning to be identified by their political parties. I said this before in previous interviews. We had completely, more or less conquered the problem of tribalism. Because if you imagine uh, Chief Awolo, people would not think of Chief Awolo a Yoruba man. Now, you say, ah, Chief Awolo, the leader of the European. Likewise, if you mention Dr. Azikiwe, the Owole of Nietzsche, people were not thinking in terms of, oh, the evil leader. No, they say that was the leader of the NPP, and so on. You follow? So we really conquered. We put Nigeria on a fantastic footing. And may God forgive those who push that republic, because they push Nigeria into, into the lowest of the low in its progress. I think one day, I hope one day, they will come out, even though in the confab, some of, the, some of them apologized. But the young ones who didn't know anything, you know, they said that they will never apologize. But Nigerians know that we move from better situation to a very hard situation. At the moment, the economy is biting. The economy is biting, I repeat it. The economy is biting. It doesn't matter whether you call it reform or what have you reform or whatever it is. The economy is biting. People are very poor, at least in my own part of the country. People are very, very poor indeed. They could hardly eat three square meals a day. Right? Very, very poor. Even the professionals, no work. Right? And then the middle class in the country has been totally destroyed. So really, where are we going? Now, many, many, not many people have the guts to say these things, but I dare say them. Because I, I, I think to tell the truth, the truth may be bitter, but because it is the truth, it never changes. Why do we keep going from bad to worse? It's like everything keeps going from bad to worse. Yesterday is always better than tomorrow and all that. Such a hopeless situation. Why is it so? It is so because uh, by and large, we Nigerians are extremely selfish. Selfish in the sense that everybody uh, is out for his own, right? And we, we, we are not really our brother's keeper. I will give you an example. If you go to the airport and there is a problem, let us say, with your flight, let us say uh, you find it difficult to find um, a boarding pass. I'm giving an example. Now, the, the man arriving there, instead of going and gathering people to go and find out the reason why there was no boarding pass around, instead he will say, ah, yes, uh, I know the, man the general manager. So he will go to the general manager and he will obtain his own boarding pass, and that's all. He will forget about the others who haven't got. That is our attitude, right? Now, can you imagine in a country like Nigeria, today there are some people that have got a billion, 1,000 million naira in the bank, lying down doing nothing, when there are people out in the street without five, five naira. Now, that's neither here nor there. Now, people like that, if they are not selfish, they could come out and bring that money and they establish factories in the country. Now, these factories could employ laborers and their money would be useful to other people in the country if they were not selfish. Now, we're talking of uh, uh, debt, 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 everyday debt, debt forgiveness, debt punishment, debt what have you, right? When there are people that have got plenty of money abroad, plenty. Now, these people, if only they would be uh, their brother's keeper, they could bring this money and invest in this country so that we can have industries. We don't say, we're not asking that their money should be taken away from them, but let that money be put to use instead of lying down in the bank in China or in England or in America or what have you. You get it? So really, uh, Nigeria is a great country, but unfortunately, we, the inhabitants, have got a lot to learn. All right, sir. Um, 
there has been this clamor for a third time in some quarters by those who are already in power. Uh, some people argue that this is really a typical case of power corrupt, absolute power corrupt, absolutely. What is your reaction? The clamor for third term. Your statement is correct, absolutely. They say power corrupts. And when it is absolute, it, it corrupts absolutely. That is correct. You see, many people don't think when they are in power that the thing is never permanent. Like, uh, I think it was um, uh, late Dr. Azikio who said, no condition is permanent. When he was told by, Asik, by late Asika, you know, mocking him, saying this, X, this, X, that, right? In other words, people who held power before. So Dr. Azikio said, no condition is permanent. You see, it depends. Some people look for power in order to accumulate money, in order to acquire the wealth of this, of this uh, world. That is their ambition. Other people seek power because they want to do good to others. Right? They, they, see, they want to see that the condition of other people is, is made better. So it all depends. So if you have got selfish people seeking power just to promote themselves, in other words, they don't know what is called selfless service, now obviously things must go from bad to worse. But, but sir, I, I keep wondering what is, like Shakespeare will ask, is the fault in us or in our staff that each time we get to a political office, we don't want to quit, we want to stay there for life, mm. as long as possible. Yeah, I'll tell you uh, that. Uh, uh, Nelson Mandela came in, handed over to Tom Mbeki, uh, Tabo Mbeki. So what, what, what is this? What is this Nigerian there factor? Is, there, there is, there is this. Mm -hmm. You see, since we value material, materialism, since this is at the forefront of our mission, most, of, most people, mm -hmm. so once you are in power, you feel that on the day you are no longer on that seat, it is like you're being stripped and you're going naked. You get it? Mm -hmm. So most people uh, wouldn't like to be out of power once they're in it. Also, it is the attitude of people. Though to some people, they think that, you see, you, when you're in power, you'll have many friends. And I keep telling my friends that anybody who comes to me because I'm in power, I don't regard him as my friend really, unless I happen to know him well before I go to that seat. I regard him as a friend of my post, the friend of my position. On the day I'm no longer on that seat, on that day he moves to the new king. You get it? This is the attitude generally of our people. So therefore, some people say, well, even those who say hello to me now, on the day I'm no longer the president, they won't even say hello. So even when you are in power, therefore, their own attitude is to pull you down. That's what I call PhD. Pull him down or pull her down. So that is the problem. So some people would like to stay there because they think that is the only honor, the only way they can retain their honor in the society. Now, it is not everybody. I am here. I was in, in politics before or I was in, uh, as a minister before. Today, believe me, I don't feel any less. And there is no minister in Nigeria, no minister that I'll meet today and I feel less. In fact, there is no minister in the world that I will meet and feel less. I am still what I have been, Umaru Diko. That is the one I want to be known by. Any other suffix or prefix, that is only temporary. And it is like a cap. When I'm going to sleep, I take it off. And in the morning, I look for it and put it on. If in the night a thief comes to take it, good luck to him. That is how I regard their political position. Our guest is uh, Dr. Marudiko, who will be back in a moment. Since you have returned from exile, very little has been heard about you. We want to find out what, what have you been doing since your return from exile? Good. I have been existing, trying to survive. Right? Mm -hmm. Now. And I've been trying to study, to re-study the country. Because my exile was like going on sabbatical. 
I was abroad, I was in England, 14 years. And I was learning. By the way, that was the period I used to learn law. Because I had every reason to respect law. It saved me from the uh, persecution of the then Nigerian government. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, since I came back, I tried uh, to go back to the profession that I was in. Although I often said politics is no profession, but still, I tried to go back to the calling, to my own calling, that is politics. But I found that I had to study anew, because many people, the attitude of Nigerians had changed. The Nigerians that we dealt with in politics were Nigerians of real honor, people who who honored honor, not people who honored Naira. But these days, many people, it is Naira that matters, nothing else. If you don't speak Naira, forget it. If you go to politics, you are only wasting your time. I was told so before leaving UK back, back home. I said, I think it was in, on BBC, that on my return to Nigeria, I would arrive with a new capital of politics. And then I remember uh, former president, Alayisho Shagali, said to me on telephone that that carpet, if you want to succeed, it must be carpet of Naira, not carpet of new politics. And when I came back, I found it was so. Everybody was just Naira. Naira in the morning, Naira in the afternoon, Naira in the evening, Naira before you go to bed. They had no other topic. So when I came back, I, um, I, I tried to establish party. Now, I didn't know that the government and so on, they had their own plans and so on and so forth. So I thought the, the game was like I knew it. But later on, when uh, people discovered that I didn't have the billions that uh, I was said to have uh, uh, accumulated, then they, they left and went to other political parties. However, so I've been re-studying in the country, and I have discovered that um, uh, to be in politics, these days we have to have the money. So I started looking for the money. But then, nobody would open the door for me. Because those people who had the power, they were afraid. that will give Duke the chance, he may even push us out. So therefore, they were not prepared to, make, to open the door where I could make money and go into politics properly. Now, this I could understand. Right? It is the fear. Right? That I could compete with them. So therefore, all that I could manage was the small bits here and there, right? In fact, I will tell you, for the six years, right? Well, I have been just trying, but I'm not complaining. So long as I'm alive, and so long as my name keeps ringing, and ring it will for a long time. You, you have formed a new political party? Yes, yeah, indeed. How is it coming up? Well, when I came back during uh, General Abacha's time, Parties were being formed, so I formed what I call Solidarity Group of Nigeria, SGN. And it was popular, but I was stuck because I had no money. Then, second time, I tried again and founded what you call United Democratic Party, UDP. Remember, distinct from PDP, U, U, DP. DP. Mm. And I even make joke and say, as soon as the PDP or any other party has cleared the scobbles, the internal scobbles, and they become united, then they move over to United Democratic Party. Because it is only the P they will drop and come to you, United, united. Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. So I've got that party. It is there. At first, uh, I was given clearance as a political association. That is the first hurdle. In other words, I set up structures all over the country, which I went and, and uh, inspected, and they gave me a certificate of provisional registration. Then they came up with a second hurdle that you must contest, uh, you must uh, contest the election, and you uh, put up candidates in elections, and they must, you must win at least five percent of two thirds of all the states in the country. So you can imagine, it wasn't an easy job, right? So I had to go two thousand of, of the states. You have to win five percent of the votes. Now that wasn't easy. 
and therefore I couldn't make it. But later on, luckily, some people went to the law. They took the matter to court that the conditions set, uh, set by INEC was unconstitutional. The constitution didn't require those things. So we were lucky. Those who took INEC to court won, and therefore we all came forward and benefited from that decision of the law. And therefore my party, United Democratic Party, has been registered. I've got the certificate, but I haven't got the money still. But I hope one day the time will soon come when PDP will be united, and when they are united, they, they, cross they, they, they cross over to UDP. Mm -hmm.